goes all the way to 11. <laughs> That's great. So I'm here with David Singleton, VP of Engineering for Android Wear, and he's going to catch us up on all the latest things with Android Wear. Thanks, Timothy. Yeah, so it's great to be back here again at Google I.O. Uh, in the wonderful sunshine. Every year. Every year. <laughs> every year it's sunny. Um, so what's new with Android Wear? Um, earlier this year, we launched Android Wear 2.0, which is our biggest update to the platform since we launched all the way back at Google I.O. in 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, and with that update, we were really focused on making some of the things that we see people do most with their watches better and faster. So we start with watch faces. Um, obviously, we all love to have watch faces that express our style. Um, but actually, what we're finding is that people love to have information that really matters to them right there at a glance throughout the day. So we made it possible for developers to put data from their apps onto any watch face that the user might choose. And for users, that's really powerful because yeah. it means you can have a watch face that matches your style but has that information from the apps that you love. Um, we made major updates to the system UI to make things like messaging much more fluid and fast. Um, and then finally, we completely revamped the fitness experience with Android Wear 2.0. So with, with 2.0 having come out earlier this year, um, what we were talking about at I.O. this year is a lot of new stuff that we're building for developers. And during the keynote, we shared some of the momentum that we're seeing uh, for Android Wear in the category, which we're really excited about. Mm -hmm. um, we shared during the keynote that we now will see 24 brands right now that have Android Wear watches. That's awesome. And we didn't say this in the keynote, but that means there are actually 46 different Android Wear watches you can choose from right now. And right from the beginning, we felt like it's really important for a product that you wear right on your body to be somewhere that you can express your personal style and passion. And so having that choice of devices, we think is, is a tremendous testament to, uh, to that. Um, some of the ones I'm most excited about, uh, Tag Heuer just launched their, their second generation product, which is called the Tag Heuer Modular 45. I haven't seen um, one yet. Is it amazing? So you should take yourself into our sandbox. Okay. You can see uh, there are, the, the best thing with this product is there are all kinds of variations. You can swap out everything from the bracelet to the little horns um, to the bezel on the watch and really create a look that's very personal to you. Um, and it also has watch faces that are personally customizable to, to match all of that. We've, we're also working with some new partners uh, for the first time this year. Uh, so Movado earlier in the year mm -hmm. announced uh, their, their product and it's, it's really exciting to see uh, the kind of minimalist design that they bring to, to their watch. Um, and then some of our other fashion partners like Michael Kors, for instance, um, have updated their lineup with uh, a new product called the, the Michael Kors Access Grayson and one called Sophie, which you can see uh, inside, uh, which is a really nice small watch, which I'm really excited will take the, the product forward for women in particular. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing this really tremendous momentum. And actually, that began before Android Wear 2.0. Uh, so when we look at our uh, new device activations for the holiday season last year, we actually saw 72% growth on the year before. And with Wear 2.0 coming out and all those new devices, we're really excited that that momentum will continue through this year and beyond. Awesome. Let's talk a little bit about fitness. It's one of the areas that I'm most excited about with smartwatches in general, right? Um, what are some of the, the new devices and some of the features there that you see users really engaging with? Yeah, thanks for the question. One of the things that we did with Wear 2.0 was completely uh, revamp the fitness experience. And one of the things that, that we really see is that what people want to do with their watches fall into two buckets, mm. two distinct kinds of use case. So one is I'm actually like working out right now and I want to track it right on my wrist. So we call that fit active mode. Uh, you can start fit activity. Um, you can use all the sensors on the product, maybe you're running or cycling, um, to see exactly how hard you're working, use your heart rate, uh, compute things like your distance and calories burned. Um, the other kind of experience is just using the product to set some goals that matter to you. Maybe I just want to be more active and I want to be active perhaps for one hour every day. Um, set that goal and then just go and live your life. The watch automatically keeps track of your movement so we can see you know, how many minutes of the day you really were uh, active. And by seeing that at a glance on any of those watch faces, um, it really helps me be more active through the day. You can see that right there in the watch I'm wearing now. Um, so we find that tremendously powerful. But also, smart watches with beautiful and vibrant screens like Android Wear devices are a great place to coach the user. Um, and so with the update that we recently launched, we introduced challenges where you can do things like sit-ups and push-ups, and the watch will actually show you exactly how to do them. 
And then it will use the sensors in the watch to, to see how many you did and are you doing them with the correct form. Um, and that's really cool because it means that there's kind of no cheating. You can't say, yeah, I did my push-ups. It's actually going to count them for you and <laughs> you're going to do more every day. And it really helps keep you motivated. That's awesome. I'd love to tell you a bit about what we have new for developers that we're Absolutely. talking about at I.O. this year. Next. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're really excited to build on the things uh, that we're seeing developers do with the Where2.0 platform. Um, and in particular, let's talk about watch faces. Mm. So I, I already mentioned that we have the complications API that lets your app put data on any watch face. But if we turn it around to the watch face developers, they can take those data and actually render them in any format that fits the aesthetic style of the watch oh, face. Cool. And, and that is cool because it means that you can have a watch face that really you know, represents the, uh, the particular visual graphic design or you know, whatever it is that, that you really care about. But some of our watch face developers have told us that they actually find it quite challenging uh, to take all of the different kinds of data that apps could provide and render them in an enchanting fashion for their users. Mm. So we're making this easier. We are launching several things here at Google I.O. that mean that if you're a watch face developer and you're dealing with this data coming from apps, you can render it really easily in an enchanting form. So one is uh, a text rendering system that allows you to fit text into any uh, any size uh, region on the screen and it will automatically resize. That's one of those things that's not as trivial as you would think it would be. That's right, it's, it actually took a lot of work to, to yeah. make this work really well. Um, and then beyond that, we have something called complication drawable. And that, that means that the system will actually take care of rendering the complication data right where you tell us. Mm -hmm. And then we provide some APIs that allow you to style it so it can still fit with the, the visual uh, flow of your watch face. And then beyond watch faces, we're also taking um, a lot of the, the work that we've done to build UI components um, and going through the process of open sourcing it. So it will be able to be evolved faster um, and you'll also be able to, to understand exactly how it works as a developer. That's very cool. All right, so what are some like good next steps? What are some things that developers can play with today? So today, you can go ahead to uh, the Android Wear website um, and you can download the SDK. You can try out all of the new APIs I just talked about. They are live on GitHub right now or as of uh, four minutes from now. Um, so take yourself over there and have fun building watch faces that use the complication API. Awesome. David, thank you so much. Thank you.